What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today we are going to be doing some spring cleaning and just plant chores in general. First step is to make sure you put the Crocs in sport mode and then we can begin to clean. So yeah, this is pretty much leftovers from the unboxing video I did of Equigenera Imports. They're actually quite messy, you really don't see this part of it, but there's a lot of plastic involved, a lot of paper, styrofoam, cardboard boxes, sphagnum moss, roots, leaves, all kinds of stuff. It's quite messy actually. Usually I try and sort out most of it so I can recycle what I can and get rid of what I can't. And then like you saw in the unboxing video, I talked about how you get a lot of sphagnum moss actually wrapped around each one of the imports. And if you collect it all, it's actually quite a bit. In this video, you'll see that there's about a gallon bag full, which is pretty darn good. I mean, that that's probably like 20 bucks worth of sphagnum moss in today's prices, honestly. So kind of offsets one of your plant purchases if you get enough. It's almost like buy 10, get one free or something. By the way, I am pretty darn sick again, so I might sound a little nasally. You might hear me breathing in the mic or something just because I'm so congested, but I apologize. But also, it's been two weeks since I put out a video, so I gotta get something out here pretty soon to appease the YouTube lords, so I guess enjoy as much as you can. One of the major themes of all of my plant chores and spring cleaning in this room is a lot of moving things around. There's a lot of picking up plants, putting them over there, then picking them back up again, setting them somewhere else. It's mostly just moving things around as I clean because there really isn't that much space down in my basement, so that's kind of like what I end up doing. But yeah, it's just shuffling things around. I think it's pretty typical for any sort of cleaning. Honestly, though, I do not know how people do it who have massive collections like in their living quarters. Because at least in the basement, I can be pretty darn messy. Leave stuff sitting for a while. It's not like super pertinent that I get to it right away because no one can disturb it. It's not really in anybody's way. So it's pretty easy for me, honestly. I'm really curious how other people do it. I know a lot of people ask me if I have plants up in my like regular house, but really I don't have very many, just a few. Maybe I would have some more if my house was designed a little differently, but I don't have any great windows for plants. And I do have a young like two-year-old son, so it's kind of hard to have that stuff. At this point, I have most of the Equigenera stuff cleared away and moved a lot of the plants out of the way. And I'm just picking up some additional trash. I got a lot of, like, one gallon, or I guess, yeah, I guess gallon water things from distilled water that I buy. Most of it's for carnivorous plants, and maybe every few months, they just kind of build up randomly, and I throw them out. Another theme that you'll notice in a lot of my plant chores or cleanups is a lot of sweeping. Um, with plants, I mean, most of you already know that. A lot of dirt, a lot of dead leaves. Honestly, I kick over a pot at least like twice a week. Sometimes the same pot over and over again. You would think I'd learn my lesson, but I don't. But there's always something to sweep. Right now we're in like the plant experiment corridor between these two shelves. Um, I have some plants on the ground, but the shelves actually contain most of the experiments that you see in the video, most of the comparisons. Or really just anything I'm growing for the videos. Usually a few times every year, maybe four times a year, I like to prune everything a little bit, cut some of the dead stuff off, clear it up, do some deadheading with anything that flowers, just stuff like that, just to make it look nice again. I don't really cut stuff that has like burnt edges, mostly just actually dead stuff. You can see it made quite a difference with that plant. But again, once you do that, it's just more sweeping, 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 sweeping. That's another thing that I'll end up doing a lot of is just sweeping the same spot over and over because I keep making a mess over and over. And that's just kind of how it is down here. I really should start like a little compost pile down here for all the dead leaves and dirt that falls because it would be better than just throwing it out. But for now, most of it just ends up in the garbage. I actually have a whole like 50 or not. Is that 50 gallon? Yeah, probably like a 50 gallon trash bag just makes it easier for chores. 
And that sweet little dustpan you see is a dream come true for the plant room. Uh, most of you guys probably have pretty decent sized collections, but this one is probably, I don't know, 200 or 300 plants or something. And they can produce a lot of dead leaves and dirt and just everything. So having the proper tools really helps make the chores go a little easier than being so cumbersome. So I definitely recommend like investing in your tools for maintaining your plant room. This corner is pretty much done for now. It's going to get messy again later, but like I said, one step at a time, especially with the way this plant room is, you just kind of keep moving things around and slowly clean up as you do circles. Now we're off to the other side. This is more of the collection side of the plant room. This is where I keep a lot of anthurium, a lot of uh, philodendron, monstera, not so much experiments, just so much, or more so just plants I collect. One of the issues I have with a lot of these vining plants is they usually grow, start to grow along the ground. I end up stepping on them. Honestly, I step on them all the time, but sometimes <laughs> it kills off the growth point and then it starts sprouting more. So it kind of almost beneficial at a certain point, but I like to keep them off the ground because it's not good to keep stomping on them. So I kind of pinned them up there and then we're back to sweeping again. If you hoard plants, you're probably a hoarder of many other things just like me. So I got a lot of bins here to try and organize it. There's still stuff everywhere, but this helps a little bit. A lot of my fertilizers and soil amendments and pesticides are in one bin. And then the other bin has a lot of the glass containers I've hoarded over time. A lot of it's just jars, and I, I believe those domes are called like a cloche or something. Cloche, I don't really know. But I keep a lot of the glass stuff and plastic stuff in one container. But there's stuff floating around all over the plant room and like the filming area. I mean, I got it everywhere, but I try to consolidate it a little bit at least. But what can you do? Again, once I got that cleaned out, there's a lot of sweeping. I found a 3D printed moss pole prototype that I was working on that's been under there for I don't know maybe three or four months really got to put that to the test along with some of the other stuff I've designed lately it's just been so busy with my kid wife and just family stuff I have not had the time to really like dedicate to the 3d printing stuff I got a lot of cool stuff I've promised it a million times but I just have not found the time to like really properly release and be able to like support it if I were to start selling so Maybe in the future. But yeah, there's some more additional jars. I love spaghetti and pickle jars. They seem to do the best. My giant pothos that you just saw is absolutely going crazy. I love that plant. There'll be some more dedicated videos to that in the future. But like I said earlier, the plant room cleanup is a lot of just moving things back and forth. Just to make room to sweep. And then you basically put it back where you found it. But... Yeah, I mean, that's just a going trend or reoccurring theme in this video, that's for sure. Another thing that I like to do, I do this probably two to three times a week, um, is really check under the leaves. The best, like, pest prevention, honestly, is it's not pesticide, it's not those beneficial insects, it's just, like, being, like, visually... Um, I don't even know what to call it. Just looking. I mean, just actually looking for pests a lot and often will save you a lot more headaches than anything else because if you can catch it soon, you can most of the time just rub them off the leaves and that's pretty much it. I mean, you can manually remove a lot of pests if you catch them early enough. Again, more sweeping. This is probably like the fifth out of the 15 times I'll end up doing this. The amount of leaves that I can acquire from all these plants is just crazy. It always blows me away like how much builds up and how fast it actually builds up. It's crazy. I 
I tried feeding some of these to my isopods. I haven't talked about them in a while. It seemed like, like maple leaves honestly work better than a lot of this tropical stuff. They really were hesitant to eat some of it, and so maybe it's not very compatible for them. I'm not really sure, but I've been trying to find ways to recycle it. But yeah, I mean, next up is to address this mess. Over time, my plants start to grow together. They get tangled, so it's always good to go through everything. I would say, I mean, I don't do it often enough, but going through all your plants and really assessing them at least once a month is probably a good idea. And again, really check under all those leaves. Finding pests before they get out of control is always best. In this footage, there's a few that I ended up finding some pests on, but um, with a collection this size, I mean, there might be people who disagree with me, but I, pests are just something I sort of live with at this point. Uh, beneficial insects, um, I haven't given them a really good try, but a lot of them need a little more heat and different conditions. Uh, I think there's a YouTuber called Kill This Plant. He had a pretty good and realistic video about using beneficial insects. A lot of them have slight caveats to them, and so that's why I haven't really gotten into them heavily. I tried once, but they didn't do very well, and I find just manually killing them or using a little neem oil does pretty well for me. However, I can never seem to eradicate all of them. So this Birkin here that you're looking at got a little overwatered, so it's looking a little weird. I did like a really big repotting right before vacation that had my parents look over them. Um, they kind of watered things a little too much, um, I guess from the perspective of they just got repotted, so they were a little in shock and they weren't able to uptake that water quick enough. So it's not really my family's fault for giving them too much water. I was more me being, I guess, ignorant and <laughs> deciding to repot like everything right before vacation. That's usually not a good idea. Don't suggest that. But most things are pulling through. They got a little weird looking for a bit. But as long as you kind of cool it with the watering and let them kind of do their thing, most can bounce back pretty well. But yeah, like I said, I'm kind of going through everything and just cleaning out the yellow leaves, making things look a little more tidy. It's just nice to do every once in a while. A lot of these plants could probably be like cut up, propagated, or honestly, some could be repotted again or put up poles, but it's one of those things I don't have quite the amount of time to get that going either. So mostly I'm just sort of rearranging them to give them the best chance at light, if that makes any sense. So a lot of these have been so bunched together that they are covering each other. And that's, well, that's part of the problem with just having a lot of plants, but I'm trying to balance like the way they sit on the shelf at this point. And just clean them up and organize them a little better. Again, you'll notice on almost all of them, I'm looking for pests. Some of them I know have had like spider mites or mealybugs. So I kind of know what to look for right away. But yeah, it's really, really important to be checking for that kind of stuff. This anthurium I think is called like the jungle king or jungle something anthurium. I really like that one. It's quite leafy. A lot of growth too. This next one is a uh, Jose Bueno. Bono? Not sure. Uh, it was really variegated, but my basement's too cold for that variegation to really come out. This Maoya is absolutely fabulous. I really love this one. It's been pretty good at like not getting pests and just having really awesome growth. This one's another one that, you know, I have an idea on it, but I can't find much information online. It's some kind of philodendron, and I, it's, it's a cutting that I just stuck right in soil without, like, propagating. And it's been like this for about a month and a half, but I think it's finally starting to bounce back. So I'm excited for that one. I got quite a good variety at this point, too. Um, my collection is something I've, like, really come to, not come to peace with, but... Uh, it's at a point where I really love everything I have and I'm not really like fiending for different plants at this point. My collection 
greed, I guess, has really calmed down. I'm pretty happy with the size. I can maintain it, and I've got pretty much what I want. You know, it's actually been pretty cool. But at this point, I got things pretty organized. I'll probably add a few other things in here, maybe off screen. Um, that far right corner is something I have to deal with, but that is not for today. Most of that is so tangled that I just don't know what to do with it. You can see, even though I already swept that, we already have to sweep it again just because I peeled a bunch of leaves. At this point, I'm trying to add some more LED lighting. These are all Barina lights, by the way. I'm not shilling them. They're a decent product. I don't get paid by them. They've never sent me anything. So it's not like... I, I don't know, you can trust me guys, or something, but uh, the top shelf has only had one set of lights that just hasn't been doing it, so you can see adding this new one has made quite a difference. I already added these to the lower shelves, but it's been like in need in the upper shelf. However, every time I have time to do it, it's like bedtime for the baby, and he's like, he's directly above that floor, basically when he sleeps, so it's pretty hard to drill into the ceiling. And during the day, I never get time, but today, or at least when I filmed this, my parents were watching my son, so it was easy to get it done. And it makes a huge difference. A lot of light up there now, and it bleeds off to the left for some of the plants on the floor. So uh, lighting is always a great addition. Like I said earlier, a lot of this is just moving some plants around. So again... I got to clear this area out so I can clean it. And then basically all these plants are going to get put back in pretty much the same spot. Just a little cleaner and with some additional things. But yeah, a lot of it, a lot of plant chores is moving things around and sweeping and then moving them back. It's kind of funny. Again, mostly just trying to inspect a little bit. Uh, for most of you that had a collection long term now for a few years, I think you've probably come to the conclusion that certain pests eat certain plants and some plants pretty much never get touched at all. Like some are just pest magnets, some aren't. So it's kind of a nice thing to learn because you know what to look for and what not to waste your time looking for. It's helped me out a ton over time just because I'm not wasting crazy amounts of time inspecting every little crevice i've sort of just learned like who does what if that makes sense and you'll notice it too in your collection certain ones are just mealybug magnets certain ones are spider mite magnets a lot of it depends on the foliage type and like the structure i guess and what it allows for Again, we are back at it with the sweeping. It's just a never-ending thing in this plant room. Another, I guess not interesting thing, but I don't know if you can see in the back corner, but it's kind of green. You know, because I'm in a basement, I'm pretty sloppy with the whole watering aspect. I've noticed the ground is like growing algae, which is not a good thing, <laughs> especially because it's my house. But I haven't seen any like mold or anything in the wood yet, so I think I'm still keeping humidity low enough. It's just the floors with the light and where the water sits. There's some algae growth, which is a little concerning, but I, I don't know. I'll have to like rebuild the plant room and like seal it in plastic or something. But for now, I'm just going to monitor that and make sure it doesn't become worse. And I get like some black mold problem or I don't know, something I definitely don't want. At this point, I have to address this entire shelf of anthuriums. I want to get them all off, really take a look at all of them, see how they're doing, and then put them back up there in a way that I can water them a little easier. They're sort of not categorized, but just in a more organized fashion. Because at the moment, for the last like five, six months, as I'm adding anthuriums to my collection, I'm just shoving them in any like empty space. So... Again, first things first, 
we gotta grab everything and move everything and while i'm doing that i'm checking them as well i'm kind of skipping through that to make it a little quick but i'm checking everything for pests as i move it this nepenthes got actually quite tangled in here so i just had to clip it out of there but yeah this has been a plant i've owned for a very long time i've almost killed it many times uh, a little tip on nepenthes don't ever give up on them even if they start drying up and they look bad I pretty much killed it, but then like a new baby growth came out towards the base and it's grown very well. And that's happened a few times. So never give up on your plants and always keep trying. Something I don't talk about super often is like the construction of the plant room, so to speak. These little trays are actually all Ikea like boot trays. They work really well on 30 inch like deep uh shelving and that's how deep all mine are they fit perfectly i love them they're pretty sturdy they're not too deep and i they've just worked so perfect for the plant room so i definitely consider those because they're a lot more sturdy than like seed starting trays and they're cheap enough where they're not like really expensive thick rubber boot trays so if you're ever trying to figure out what to put on your shelves measure them out and see if they fit well By the way, you may have heard in the background my like sump pump going off a few times. I'm not really sure. I've had headphones on. But if you hear a weird sound, that's what that is. But at this point, I got everything pretty clean up there. And now I'm just putting anthuriums back on the shelf. Trying my best to put the more taller ones in the back and the shorter ones in the front. And that'll make it a little easier for me to water. Here you can see the collection kind of right then and there. And they're looking pretty awesome. I've got a nice spirit to sancti. Quite a few awesome plants that I really love. Next up, I got to get rid of this like fern bowl thing here. It's like seaweed soup. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with it, honestly. I had some little shrimp in there, but they passed away. And it's just kind of been multiplying ferns. I really like ferns and aquatic ferns are a thing. So this jar is just full of aquatic ferns. I started with a few and they've actually done pretty well. This whole corner, in fact, is all ferns. However, you can see some are looking all right, and some have definitely seen better days. A little crispy. Uh, the thing I could probably blame it on after like some inspection and some introspection was the pots were too full of soil. So every time I watered it, it just runs off the edge, never soaks it, kind of poorly done. This is a pretty cool philodendron. I want to say it's like a black cardinal or something. I forget. I love it, but it's been on the floor this whole time. So we're going to put it up in this back corner. It'll kind of prop it up a bit. And then on top of that, we're going to put the ferns next to there and a few more anthuriums. This bottom shelf has always kind of been a mess. It's like where all the seedlings are. So we're just going to dump out all the pots where the seedlings didn't make it. There's quite a few that don't make it. It's either from vacations or just, I don't know what. There's all kinds of reasons that some of these didn't survive. But the ones that did are much hardier and I guess better off. Uh, I guess when you start a lot of seedlings, this is maybe a thing that happens. But I know other people are more successful. But growing in a basement, honestly... It's not the easiest. The climate's just not that great for plants. It's quite cool, and I can't get the humidity too high without possibly damaging the house. So, I don't know. I always feel bad losing some seedlings, but I'm only human. What can I do, you know? This fern is something I definitely wanted to try and like make it look a little better. It was so crispy. So I did clear some of the dirt out of the pot so that it can retain a little more water and just kind of cleaned it up a bit. Got rid of some of the dead stuff. Same with this uh, crocodile fern. I don't even know how it can turn black like that, but it did. And I cleaned that one up too. Something that I'm sort of learning, you know, as I go, I used to like pack these things in like on top of each other. But it gets tough to water them over time because the leaves cover the other ones. You can't always tell which ones you watered. 
So lately I've been trying to spread my plants out a little bit more. So it's a little easier for me to really monitor like their status. You know, how wet's the soil? How dry is it? If it's too thick, you can't really see in there. It's too hard. And I've lost quite a few seedlings to that actually where I wasn't able to properly water them. So if I had any tips for you from this section here, it's kind of space your stuff out a little bit based on how big the foliage is. It can really block quite a bit and make it difficult to water and just keep track of. The real small stuff you can put close to each other, but yeah. Well, that's pretty much it for this. There might be a part two. There's still so much more work to do, but you can only make a video so long about cleaning stuff up. So I hope you guys like this. And as always, may your plants go strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.